Is AI going to take over the world? AI might be smart, but it's not plotting world domination. Hmm. If you've clicked on this video, you've probably already used ChatGPT, and honestly, it's probably impressed you. You've put in a prompt, and it's come back with a smart, clever response that's likely saved you a bit of time. But here is what most people don't realize. As clever as ChatGPT already is, you're only just scratching the surface. See, when you really learn how to use it, you can take those good responses and make them even better. So in this video, I'm going to explain how ChatGPT works, how most people are leaving value on the table, and the exact prompt strategies to take your good responses and turn them into mind-blowing outputs. So before we dive into prompt strategies, it's important to understand how ChatGPT works and how it's interpreting our prompts. Now, if you're a complete beginner, a prompt is simply the text that you're putting into ChatGPT. It's the question that you're asking it or the command that you're giving it. So what are most people doing wrong? Well, their prompts are simply too vague. They're treating ChatGPT like a Google search, but that's not the way to get the most out of it. Sure, you can give it a prompt like, write me a blog post about productivity using Notion, and it will give you a good response, but it can do way better. ChatGPT isn't actually thinking or searching the internet when you ask it something. Instead, it's trained on massive amounts of text like websites, books, and articles so that it could learn how people usually write and talk. When you type something in, it's trying to figure out what words are most likely to come next based on everything that it's seen before. It's basically trying to recognize a pattern. That's why if you give it a very vague prompt, the answer is likely to be weak or slightly off topic because ChatGPT has to do a lot more guesswork. But if you give it a really clear structure, it can give you a much better result. It's almost like having an expert answer a question of yours directly. That's why prompt structure is so important. So let's break down what makes a really good prompt. An easy way to remember this is to follow the formula role plus context plus goal. The role is who you want ChatGPT to be. It could be an author, a Python programmer, a marketer, or even a UI UX designer. This helps ChatGPT take the right approach and perspective when generating an answer. Think of it like hiring a specialist for a job. If you ask a question like, give me some ideas, you could be asking a friend for some suggestions. But if you say you are a YouTube strategist, you're now getting insights from someone who is very experienced in that niche. Next is context. This is all of the background information that ChatGPT needs to give you a relevant answer. Are there any limitations or details that you want it to consider? The clearer a picture you can paint for ChatGPT, the better it can tailor a response to your situation. And lastly, the goal. This is where you make it clear how you want ChatGPT to respond. Do you want it to help you with brainstorming? Do you want it to write something? Do you want it to summarize a piece of text? With the goal, you're telling ChatGPT exactly what you want it to give back. So when you put those together, a good prompt is something like, you are a YouTube strategist. I run a tech channel and want to grow to 10,000 subscribers. Give me five video title ideas based on what's trending this week. See how specific that is? ChatGPT now knows exactly who it's pretending to be, what your exact situation is, and what outcome you wish to achieve. So when you give it that clarity, not only are the outputs better, but they're also more relevant and useful for you. The clearer you are, the better the results. It's really that simple. Now that you understand the basics, here are some tricks to make your prompts even better. Number one is progressive prompting. One of the best ways to get the most out of ChatGPT is to think of your first prompt as the start of a conversation and not a one-time instruction. Instead of asking for a full project in one go, break it down into smaller focused stages. 
Start with something like, you are a travel planner. I'm visiting Dubai for five days and I'm interested to check out a few food spots. I like architecture and I'm keen to do a bit of shopping. Can you suggest a general day by day itinerary? See how we've set the goal, we've given it some context and we have a clear goal. Once you get the initial plan, you can now build on it. Stay in the role of a travel planner. Based on that itinerary, can you recommend two to three local restaurants for each day that fit a mid-range budget? Now you're layering in more detail and ChatGPT is building upon the context that you're providing it. You're still my travel planner. Can you turn this into a shareable PDF style travel guide with tips on what to pack, local customs and estimated daily costs. At every step, you're telling ChatGPT exactly what you need and giving it the information that it needs to give you a tailored and useful response. This layered back and forth response is one of the most powerful ways to work with the AI. Instead of trying to hit a home run with your first prompt, you're working with it like a creative collaborator, refining your output as you go. Number two is style and voice matching. A powerful way to fine tune ChatGPT's output is by asking it to match a specific style or voice. The right tone of voice can make all the difference. It might get all the facts right, but if it sounds flat or generic, it's not going to have the same impact especially if what you're looking for is something to publish, like a blog post. This is where style and voice matching comes in. And just like everything else, it's all about being clear and specific with what you want. For example, you are a travel writer. Rewrite this Dubai itinerary in the style of a Lonely Planet guide. Clear, informative, and written for young adventurous travelers. Whether you're after a formal professional tone or something a bit more relaxed, you have to tell ChatGPT exactly what you want. When you match the voice correctly, the content starts to feel more personal, as if you wrote it rather than a robot. Number three is format the output. Sometimes you don't want a big block of text. You need the information presented in a specific format and ChatGPT can do that. You can ask it to break things down into bullet points, a list, a plan, or even a specific type of social media post. For example, summarize it in three clear bullet points. Or if you're planning social media content, turn this into an engaging Instagram caption under 100 words. This way you get exactly what you need without any extra fluff or unnecessary information. As you can tell, it's all about being direct and telling ChatGPT exactly how you want your output. Number four is self-editing and improvements. Here's a trick that most people overlook. You can ask ChatGPT to review the output that it just produced. Instead of leaving it as a first draft, you can have ChatGPT refine its own outputs. For example, look at what you just wrote. How can you improve it? Or if you want a more focused edit, can you rewrite this to make it more persuasive? Or you can even ask for a more concise version. Can you shorten this to under 100 words while keeping the main points? This gives you a second pass at the output without having to take it out and do these edits for yourself. ChatGPT can spot areas for improvement and is really good at self-editing. And lastly, number five is to save and reuse your prompts. Once you find a prompt that really works well, save it for later. Over time, you can build your own library of go-to prompts that you know get you consistent results. These saved prompts become kind of like a personal toolkit. You can of course tweak these prompts for every new situation, but it saves you from having to start from scratch. Now that you know how to properly prompt ChatGPT, let's look at a quick example. But before we dive in, if you've enjoyed this video so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. Now I've already saved my prompts just for the sake of this demo to speed things up. So let's start with, you are a travel planner. I'm keen to travel to Italy for five days. I'll be visiting Venice, Florence, and Rome. I want to see all of the main tourist spots and try out some good Italian restaurants. Can you please create an itinerary for my trip? And in just a few seconds, ChatGPT has created a full five-day itinerary for my trip to Italy. Now, I don't quite like how it's formatted in these bullet points. I'd prefer it in a table, so let's ask it to reformat. Can you please reformat this information in a table with each day in a new column? 
And there we go, this information is already so much easier to read, but we can take it one step further. Please add emojis for each activity. For example, if I'm traveling on a train, add a train emoji. This has just made things a little bit more visual and interesting. Now let's add some costing. Can you please add an estimated cost for each activity in USD? And there we go, I can now see how much each activity might cost. There's even some free activities which I might check out. In just a few steps, we've already created a five day itinerary in a matter of seconds. It's even given me a total per day at the very bottom. Now, of course, there's a lot more that I can do with this itinerary, but for the sake of this example, it's pretty much ready for me to copy out into say, a Google Sheets file or an Excel spreadsheet and take it with me. And there you have it. You now know how to properly prompt ChatGPT to get the very most out of it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.